Hello guys. In this video, we will see how we can implement a simple sentiment analysis model using LSTM. Okay. So for this, I have considered a data set uh, which has 1.6 million records. It's basically a Twitter data set and it has two sentiments, positive and negative sentiments associated with each of the tweets. Okay. So let's get started. So here, as you can see in the notebook here, this notebook here. So I have read the data and have imported some required libraries initially. Okay. And I have given the column names for the red data. So let's see how the data looks like. So if I say df dot head. Okay. So this is how my data looks like. Now our main <coughs> in columns of interest are target and text. Right, so target is our sentiment, text is the text on which the sentiment is decided. Okay, so let's do away with all of the remaining columns. We do not want that. So, how we can do that? Let's just replace the df. df is equal to df of target, comma, text. Okay, now if I check my df dot head, okay, so we have this. Now, if we check the Unique values in the target df of target dot unique. So there are two numbers 0 and 4. For some reason, positive sentiment is represented with the number 4, and negative sentiment is represented with the number 11. Okay. Now what we will do, we will replace that 4 with number 1. So how do we do that? We will say df of target dot I will use the replace method available with pandas series right so what I want to replace I want to replace 4 with 1 and I want it to be in place so I will set in place equal to true so now if I check my df dot head so the first 5 reviews are all negative so let me execute this or let's say we want to check the count of how many tweets are positive sentiment tweets and how many are negative sentiment tweets. Let's check that. So how we can check that? We can say df of target dot value counts. Right. So we have equal distribution. Out of 1.6 million records, 800,000 belongs to negative sentiment. 800,000 belongs to positive sentiment. Okay. So. So just let, let, let me just write it here. One a value of one in the target column represents positive sentiment. Otherwise, it is negative. Okay. So just for reference. Now we'll see if there are any null values with the text if there are any null values in the text we will have to remove them so how do we do that overall we can check for both target and text i will show that how we can do that so it's simple it's df dot is null dot sum right so it says zero so there are no missing values in our data set okay so since the total record count is 1.6 million so, how do I know that? You can either add this or I can check the shape of df. Right. So, it is 1.6 million records. So, if we consider everything and try to build a model, half of our day would be lost in just pre-processing the data. Okay. Because it is a huge data. So, what we will do? We will take 50,000 records from each class. From positive sentiment class and from negative sentiment class, we will take 50,000 records. So, how do we do that? Let us prepare the filters for that. Okay. So, let me say positive filter POS underscore field is equal to DF of target is equal to 1. And similarly, I will prepare a negative filter. I will call it as negative field and the DF of target will be equal to 0. Now, I have my filters ready. I will create two separate data frames df positive is equal to df dot lock of 
pos pos underscore filled that is i am considering all the records which are having positive sentiments i am putting that in a variable called as df pos similarly i will create another variable called as df neg which holds the negative sentiment records so how do i do that df dot lock of neg filled so if i execute it i will have my two data frames ready each data frame has one sentiment associated with it okay so if we check it df pos dot head it will have all targets one okay and if we check df neg dot head it will have zero so there is a typo so the target is zero okay so now what now what we have done we have we did split the entire data into two separate data sets one with positive sentiments and another with negative sentiments okay now what i will do i will consider only one lakh records 50000 records from positive sentiment and 50000 records from negative sentiment so i'll do that why because we do not want to waste our time in demoing how to build a lstm model right because we have 1.6 million records it will take almost a day to build it with the infrastructure that we have with us okay so let us just take 50000 records from each of this data frames that we have here positive and negative so how can we do that we'll just override the same thing with df pos df pos dot i lock 0 to 50000 and similarly we will get all the records for df negative again this will be 0 to 50000 now what i will do i will concatenate these two data frames into one single data frame df i'll call it as df is equal to pd dot concat i need to supply what i need to concat right so i'll need to concat df pos and df neg then i'll say ignore index is equal to true if these index if these indices doesn't represent or doesn't make any sense to us if we do not want that we can set ignore index equal to true or if index denotes some meaning for this data set we should set it to false and let the index be as it is okay so now what i'll say i'll just execute it now if we check the df dot save instead of 1.6 million it is 100000 and if i check df of target dot value counts i will have 50000 each okay so now we have the data set that is required it is just we are filtering out the data set we have not yet done the pre processing step okay so let me just quickly display the top 5 records of this data frame so this is how it looks like now the first 50000 will be the tweets with positive sentiments and the last 50000 will be the tweets with negative sentiments so if you just check the tail all the records will have the target value zero okay since this is a organized data now right so first we are dealing with positive sentiments once we are done with that we have negative sentiments data right so we do not want the data to be in this order we want this to be in a random way so that our model can learn learn in a better way so what happens if we do not randomize it so first 50% it will be all one next 50% it will be all zero so our model what it can do it can just simply predict everything belong to one class so the accuracy will always be 50% so we do not want that to be happening so what i'll do i will just randomly shuffle it i'll randomly shuffle the entire data frame how do i do that i'll say df equal to df dot sample fraction is a argument i'll set it to 1 because i want the entire data set but i want it to be sampled in a random way and in what random way i have to set the random seed random seed, random state is equal to some number so that the results are reproducible here i have set it to 43 you you can set it to just one so it doesn't matter okay and then i'll say 
okay so once i do this what happens it will shuffle including the index values also so if you just check the output df dot head the index values will not be in order right so for for this to be reset to start from zero what i'll say i'll say dot reset index and drop is equal to true so what is this drop equal to true so let me just give a demo on that also see so if i just execute reset index and then if i check my data it will create a new column called as index but i do not want this index column so what i'll do i'll say drop is equal to true so in this way we are doing away with the index okay so what happened uh, or all right as i already had index in it it's not dropping it's just resetting it again. So what I'll do, I'll just concatenate it again. Now I'll have the reset index, and I am done. I am doing away with the index column also. Okay. What I did till now, what I did, I took fifty thousand records from positive sentiment and fifty thousand records from negative sentiments. I concatenated it and then shuffled it. That's it. I did nothing. Now what we will do, we will apply our pre-processing. So I will just give a subheading pre-processing. So what we will do, we will consider only alphabets from this column text. We will do away with numbers and we will also do away with this characters. We will also remove all the punctuations also. Okay. Then what we will do, we will convert everything into lowercase. Then we will do stemming you can choose either stemming or lemmatizing in this uh, video i am going ahead with stemming okay and then we will again form the text as it is okay so let's do that so pre-processing so since we have one lakh records let me import pqdm so that it will give us the progress path we will have an idea how much time it takes to complete the pre-processing step okay so i'll you will learn that in a while now then i need stemming so stemmer is equal to quarter stemmer okay so now the code that i'm gonna write here you've already seen in my previous video uh, when i was uh, giving you an example of how do we implement a email spam classifier right so this is the same code so text is a list for i in pqdm range of length of df so i want to traverse through all the records in this particular df right so that that's that's taken care by this for loop what i'll say i'll say text is equal to re re is a regular expression i hope i have imported it yes i have imported it so what i'll do i'll do with all the characters except a to z whether it's capital or small, I'll keep only alphabets. So what I'll say, re dot sub. So what characters I do not want, to, except the caret negates, right? So except a to z and capital a to capital z. I want everything to be removed, and I want it to be substituted with a empty white space. And I want it to be applied on DF of which column I want it to be applied on DF of text. And since DF of text returns everything, entire series, I want it to be applied on one sentence at a time. So what I'll say, DF of text of I. Okay, I'll traverse through sentence by sentence. Okay, so this is what this particular line is doing. Next, what I'll do, I'll say text equal to text of Lower. So this is straightforward. I am converting everything into lowercase letter. Next, what I will do, I will say text is equal to text dot split. So by default, split method will split the text at white spaces. Okay, so it will return as a list. List of words separated with white spaces. Okay. Now that I have split, why I did split? Because I want to stem each word, right? So what then what I will do? Text is equal to Stemmer dot stem word. I want to stem word 
and where do we get those words from for word in text right because we are splitting it right so we have words in that text word in text and we'll also remove the stop words so everything we can do with the help of list comprehension if word not in stop words dot words of english so which language we are dealing with we are dealing with english language so this sentence this particular line of code here what it does it stems the word and then removes the stop word okay it does two things and we have plugged everything into a single line here right after this what i'll do i'll say i'll just join each word which we get from this particular line of code and that will be stored as a list into this particular variable text so what i'll say i'll say join with white space each word join text i'll pass on this list here next what i'll do i'll append this text into this text so that i'll have an entire list of this particular text column okay so what i'll say text dot append text so now if i execute it you see this progress bar is being shown with the help of this tqdm okay so tqdm accepts some iterable and based on this length it will show us the progress bar now it is telling us it's going to take around uh, 8 to 8 to 9 minutes okay so what i'll do i'll just pause this video record and then i will come back once this pre processing is complete and we will continue from there so yeah it completed it took around 8 minutes 37 seconds to complete this entire pre processing steps okay so how does the data looks like after pre processing so if i just check this okay so everything is in lower case and i do not see any characters other than a and z a to z right and everything is stemmed and stop words are removed okay so this is what we did in pre-processing now what we need to do uh, while looking at the data i found some of the text has urls in it so we are not sure how many texts has urls in it so we need to clean that as well so in this pre-processing steps, we did not consider to remove the URLs. So what I'll what I'm gonna do, I will again do some pre-processing, and this time I'll only be removing the URLs. And how I am removing? I'm removing again using the regular expression. Okay, so this is how this is the pattern for URL. You can supply that for your regular expression and replace that with empty nothing. You do not want anything. If there is a URL, you just remove it and you want to apply it on each of these texts. Then what I will do, I will store these texts in another list called as cleaned texts. Okay. So I am covering this entire loop in TQDM so that again we will see the progress. So this should be quick. It should not take much time. Yes. So it took almost a second to complete. So now if I check my cleaned text. So this is how it looks. So you you may not see much difference between text and clean text because right here we are not able to see any URLs, but there are many URLs within the data. So if you can refer to one of the text and then come and check with the clean text, you will see that URLs would have been removed. Okay. Now that we have prepared the data as we want, we have pre-processed it. What we have to do? We have to tokenize this. Okay, so this is just a, these are just a quick steps involved for any NLPs, NLP projects, right? So first we will read the data and do EDA, EDA stands for exploratory data analysis. Then we will pre-process it. We will tokenize the data. Pre-processing depends. So in our case, we converted everything to lower case. We did stemming, we removed stop words and we removed URLs. So, depending upon the data that we have, these pre processing steps can be reduced or we can have multiple checks again. Okay. So, this is dependent on the data that we are dealing with. Once we are done with 
pre-processing we have to tokenize so when i say tokenize we have to convert each sentence into individual words so words are our tokens right once we tokenize it we need to convert these words into numbers so if i say my name is shankar so after all pre-processing it looks like like this my name is shankar so this is a sentence so when i say we have to tokenize it i have to separate out my name is shankar as separate words and have that in a list so it will be my name is shankar okay so this is what tokenizing means so once we do the tokenization we have to assign some numbers to these words so how do we do that it will be done with the help of tokenizer only so once tokenizer looks at the data it will create a word index dictionary word index dictionary okay so this will have words and the number associated with it so in this way we can convert it to numbers so once we do that we need to fix the length of the sentence for inputting into the model so what do i mean by this fixing the length of the sentence so i'll say my name is shankar is one sentence okay i am from karnataka and i'll also end it with the country name where karnataka is okay so this sentence is having four tokens and this sentence is having five tokens right so we need to fix the length of the sentences that we have so how do we do that let's say we have in our case we have considered 1 lakh records or 100000 records right so what we will see out of all the 100000 records we will take the maximum length of maximum length sequence so we will calculate the length of each sentence and then we will take the maximum length out of all the sequence and then we will set that as, that as our sentence length which we will be inputting to our model okay so what is happening in this step so let's say our max length comes to be 10 okay so out of 100000 sentences a sentence with maximum number of tokens is 10 okay so that's why the max length will be 10 so how do you convert these two sentences with the length of 10 how do you convert this length of 4 to length of 10 so what we do we do padding so we do pad the sentences which are short shorter than the max length with zeros and where do we pad this we pad it beforehand so what i what i'll say for the first sentence i'll need to pad six zeros before this right so it will look like zero 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 so this is padding and then i'll have the numbers associated with my let's say 10 name let's say 23 i let's say 6 shankar let's say 30 so if these are the numbers associated with each of these words in the sentence this is how the input looks like okay so this is once we have this this is called our prepared data to feed into the model once we do this we will design the model when I say designing the model, we will decide on the architecture. What will be the shape of the input? How many hidden layers we will have? How many LSTM layers we will have? If we will have any embedding layers, okay? We will decide on that. We will train the model. We will evaluate the model. We will fine tune the model and then we will personalize the model. So these are the basic and important steps we have to follow in any machine learning or deep learning projects, okay? In productionalization, there are multiple steps. Let's not talk about that right now. Okay. Let's now concentrate on implementing the code for sentiment analysis. Okay. Now that we have already seen the steps involved, we have cleaned the text. We have to convert this into tokens. So how we can do that? We can do that with the help of tokenizer, which is present in the Keras library. So what I'll, what I'll do from Keras dot preprocessing dot text import tokenizer and i'll also import 
a method which will help us to pad the sequences right so that will be from keras dot preprocessing dot sequence import pad sequences so these two things we need okay so what i will do now i will initialize the tokenizer tokenizer is equal to tokenizer what i will say i will ask this to go through the text that that we have so i will say tokenizer dot fit on text we have text right we do not have the sequence set so what i will say i will pass on the clean text okay now it will learn the vocabulary and also it will prepare the word index dictionary so let's see tokenizer dot word index so go has got number 1 get is assigned number 2 day is assigned 3 so so on and so forth so what it will do it will first prepare the vocabulary and then st starts assigning the numbers to the each words in the vocabulary okay so how do we check what's the size of the vocabulary so it's just a length of this di dictionary right so how we can do that i can say length of this particular dictionary so we total have 71280 words in our dictionary okay now we have tokenized the sen now we have asked tokenizer to learn about the tokens what we have to do we have to convert this sentences cleaned text into sequences with the help of tokenizer so how do we do that i will say tokenized sentences is equal to tokenizer dot text to sequences okay and then i'll pass clean text so now if you check tokenized sentences you will you will see something like this okay so this is the output of this particular code execution so what are this so triple 1 2 3 so if i check the cleaned text let me just show it to you cleaned text so andy taylor son right so this andy taylor son actually has the number 11123 associated with it so how do i know that because we have trained this tokenizer to learn the vocabulary and prepare the word index dictionary right so let me just verify that so tokenizer dot word index of which word i want to check i want to check the index of this particular word so this is 11123 and so we have starting word numbering with 11123 here okay so now that we have converted the sentences into sequences we have to you can see here right so this particular sentence is of length 3 so it has only 3 words and it has 5 words right so it has 8 words so this doesn't work while we train the model we want everything to be of same length so for that what we will do we will first check what's the max length what is the longest sentence in this particular tokenized sentences okay so how we can do that i'll say max length is equal to so what i'll say length of sentence for sentence in tokenized sentences right then i will take the maximum of that particular length so now if i check max length okay so we can say that out of our 100000 text records the longest sentence is having 36 tokens in it or 36 words in it okay so this is what we have arrived at now what we will do we will pad all the sequences to have the length 36 so for the sequences which are already having length 36 it will not be padded for the sequences which are having length less than 36 only those will be padded so how we can do padding it's simple so we can say pad sequences what we have to pad we have to pad tokenized sentences 
and what's the max length? M A X L E N is a parameter, or you can call it as an argument, and that will be we will be setting it to max length variable here, which is thirty six. Okay, max length, and then padding. Where you want the padding to be? You can either have it pre or post. We will go with pre here. Okay, and I have to assign a variable. I have to store this padded sequences in one variable, and let me call that as padded. input sentences so now if i check my padded input sentences you see so the first word or if you look at the third word head beauty weather yard work so let's look at this so head beauty weather yard work converted into a length of 36 with the actual token numbers coming towards the end okay so already those sentences which are having 36 sequence length they will not be padded like this okay so now if you check whatever sequence you want all sequences will have 36 tokens in it okay so this is what we wanted actually and we already have our this will be treated as x so this is our x and we need our y right so how do we get that we get it from df right and the target column is target so if i check my y so it is having values zeros and ones and what will be the shape y dot shape you can have a look at here it's of length 100000 so shape will also be of 100000 and similarly we can check the shape of padded input sentences shape so we have 100000 sentences and each sentence has 36 tokens in it okay so now for our keras model in order to develop that we need to have the inputs x in three dimensional shape right so we need to convert this into three dimensional numpy array so how we can do that we can say padded input sentences dot reshape so reshape is a method available for numpy arrays so what i'll say i'll say padded input sentences dot shape of 0 comma padded input sentences dot shape of 1 comma 1 so i am just adding an additional dimension so that this will be converted into three dimensional array so now i'll need to save this in a variable so i'll just use the same variable name so that it will be replaced so now if i execute it and then check in the shape of it now it will be of three dimension see earlier it was of two dimension now it is of three dimension now we are ready ready for what we are ready to build the model and train our model so let me just give it a heading here lstm model okay so in order to build this i have to import few things from keras library from keras dot models import we are dealing with sequential models right so sequential and i will be needing dense layer i will be needing lstm layer i will be needing maybe embedding okay so let let me import that from keras dot layers import dense lstm embedding okay so let, let's not worry about uh, regularization for this moment okay let's just go ahead with these particular things so if we want to fine tune we will need to import additional things such as dropout layers and we may also need to import something called as batch normalization layers okay so let's not worry on that part i'll cover those topics in my separate video where i will be dealing with uh, fine tuning or avoiding overfitting in deep learning models deep network models okay that will be a separate topic so now i have imported the required libraries i will initiate the model model is equal to it will be of type sequential now i will add the layers to it model dot add so what it will be lstm and what will be the number of neurons in lstm it's up to us right so let me go with uh, let me go with 100 neurons in it okay and input shape we need to specify 
input shape and it will be actually three dimensional but we specify only these two things here the length of the sequence and how many at a time so at each time step we will get one sentence so we will just mention that here so i'll just copy these two things so this will be my input shape okay so now i have added the lstm layer now i need to add a dense layer so why i need dense layer so dense layer is to predict the output so we have two classes right so we can treat it as a binary classification we can have only one neuron in the dense layer and activation function would be sigmoid or we can have two neurons and activation function would be softmax so let's not go with softmax let's just stick to sigmoid and one neuron in the dense layer okay so i'll have to okay now i have my model ready so if i check model dot summary so it says i have two layers one is lstm and another is dense and lstm has 100 neurons in it okay and this lstm expects input of length 36 by 1 so just to show it to you with a diagram this is how our model what we have right now looks like so we will have our inputs x here we will feed it to the lstm block so this block has 100 neurons right so that's what we have said so this will have 100 neurons So this is our LSTM block and finally we are connecting these 100 neurons to a dense layer which is having one neuron. So this will be fully connected. Okay. This is our output layer with activation function sigmoid. So this is how our LSTM model looks right now what we have defined in the code. Okay. Now we have defined it, we have to compile the model. When I say compile the model, we have to tell, we have to pass it some information such as, I will tell you model.compile. So what loss should be considered? So since we are considering a binary classification, it will be binary cross entropy. Okay, so just let me verify the word here. Yeah, all small I guess. Okay. So it will be binary cross entropy and which optimizer to use. So I will just say Adam for now. Okay. And then which matrix to monitor? We will monitor accuracy. So now if I hit this model is ready and also it has assigned a loss function called as binary cross entropy and instead of gradient descent i am using something called as adam optimizer and metrics to monitor is accuracy okay so do not worry about the optimizers here adam rms prop there are many optimizers available i will cover everything in my another video that will be purely dedicated to optimizers okay and in another one of my videos i will cover the all loss functions what we will be using in our deep learning models so here we are just using binary cross and row. Okay. So now we will train our model. So let me just give it a subheading. Training the model. So how we can train the model using model dot fit. And what will be the input? It will be added input sentences. That is our x. Y is our y. And we have to tell it for how many epochs I want to train it. So, since we have 100,000 records and 36 length sentences, it will take a while if we set it to 100 epochs. So, what we will do for the demonstration purpose, we will set it to just 5 epochs. I will set verbose equal to 2 so that I will have 
output after each epoch and set shuffle to false because I do not want to shuffle my input data as I already shuffled it within the data frame itself. And one more thing important is validation split. So out of this padded input sentences x, how much should be set aside for validation? So let me set aside 33% as my validation data. So out of 100,000 records, I will use uh, 33,000 records for validation purpose and 67,000 records for training purpose. Okay. And this fit will return a history of the model training. I will tell you what this history is once we are done with training. Okay. So let me just train it. I hope I haven't messed up anything with respect to dimension. We will get to see it in a while. So if there are any issues with the data preparation or the model preparation here or if we have messed up with the shape anywhere, this will give us error at first instance itself okay even though it is trying to train for one epoch now if it fails to match the input with what we have specified here for the model dimensions it will throw us an error okay so since it is able to compute the loss and training accuracy and validation accuracy we can be sure that we have not messed up the dimensionality anywhere okay so this may take a minute or two because for each epoch it is taking 27 seconds so we have total five epochs right so it will take around two minutes so we will come back after the training is over okay so the training is now complete it took just more than two minutes okay so now as you can see here i have run it for only five epochs but the model is hardly learning anything so the accuracy on training set is also around 54 55 and in the end we got it up to 57 percent and validation accuracy is also around 55 percent so the model is not learning even the training data also right so it is unable to identify the patterns for the training data also so one of the reasons could be the model is very simple it is unable to learn some complex patterns hidden in the data and another reason could be the choice of our model architecture. So here we are just inputting the sequences as numbers, as some numbers, right? So these numbers range from 1 to 71,279, right? So what we can do, we can have an embedding layer added to the added to this model. And then try to learn the embeddings for this vocabulary that we have with us. Okay. And then we can try to train the model. Okay. So let, 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 me, let me show you how we can add the embedding layer and ask the model to learn the embeddings on the go. So for that, let me add a subheading LSTM with embedding layer. So what we have to do, I'll just name it as model 1 model 1 is equal to again it will be sequential now what i'll say i'll add model 1 dot add i'll add an embedding layer okay embedding i want to input few things to this so first will be what is the vocabulary size okay so it will be length of we have tokenizer right so tokenizer dot word index and we have to say plus one okay so why we have to say plus one because indexing always starts from zero but tokenizer will always start assigning the numbers from one okay it will not start from zero so that's why we have to state the vocabulary size as plus one of our tokenizer length hope that is clear okay then we have to define the size of our embedding so what is the size of embedding so it's actually a dimension for each word representation so if you have seen my gensim video on how to train a word to vec model there we have multiple dimensions available with us right so 100 dimensional vectors we can get 300 dimensional vectors we can get 200 dimensional vectors so on and so forth so this 
dimensionality we have to specify it as part of our embedding layer so since we are dealing with this uh, simple data set let's just go with something called something some small number okay so let's just have the word embeddings represented as a vector of length 32 okay and what will be the input length so this is a third parameter which we have to which we have to pass it so input length will be it will be 36 right so that's the sequence length which is max length so i can pass this here so what's the length of the sentence so length of the sentence is 36 size of the embedding should be 32 and the vocabulary is word index length plus 1 so i have told you yb do plus 1 okay so just give it a thought if you are not understood let me know i'll explain it in comments okay now what i'll say model 1 dot add now i have my embedding layer i'll add my lstm layer just i did like this here right so i'll say i'll just copy it okay okay so i'll remove this okay so add lstm input shape so again in this lstm also we'll have 100 neurons okay then i'll have dense layer added just like this to get our output predictions model one dot add dense okay so now my model new model with embedding layer is ready so if i check the summary you see we have a embedding layer and there are two million parameters to learn just with 32 dimensional output Okay, so just imagine if we increase it to 100, 200, 300, the number of trainable parameters will increase exponentially. Okay, so in order to avoid that, save some time, we are doing with some small dimensional embedding. Okay, so if you check the number of trainable parameters of this model with our previous model, it varies a lot. So in, my, in our first model, we had only 40,000, nearly 41,000 trainable parameters, weights and biases together. but as we added an embedding layer here, the parameters increased exponentially. So now the parameters we have to train is 2 million. 2,334,000 parameters we have to train and update the update them by back propagating through time. That's why this will take some time to train. Okay. So now that we have the model ready, we have to compile it, right? So it will be the same thing. The loss will be again binary cross entropy. It will be model one optimizer. We will uh, maintain Adam and accuracy will be matrix will be our accuracy. Right now that we have compiled the model, we are ready to train the model. So the training is again the same way. So if I just copy that and instead of model, it will be model one. Epox, I will keep it to five only. It will take more maybe more than 10 minutes let's see how much it how much it takes and i'll update you guys so i'll start to train here we will just wait for one epoch uh, to complete and give us the output so that we are sure we have not messed up with the dimensionalities here okay so let's just wait so why i have added this embedding layer what is the need for this so this embedding layer will convert the sequences that we have into some dense representation with some meanings, meaningful insights in it. So just like uh, with respect to bag of words and uh, TFIDF, right? So those are all dependent on the frequencies. So they doesn't take care of the context around them, right? So to avoid that, in order to solve that, we came up with something called as word to way. And in that we will have the word embeddings with different dimensionality vectors 100 dimensions 200 or 300 dimensions correct so in the same way what we are doing we are learning the embeddings for our vocabulary at our first layer so this is how the architecture looks like so what we will have as usual we will have our input layer so we have our input layer so this is our input layer so just before fading to LSTM, we will have our embedding layer. Okay, so this is our embedding layer. 
and this is of dimension 32. So, each input word will be converted into a 32 dimensional vector with dense representation, dense vectors. Okay. So, now this embedding layer will act as an input to our LSTM block. LSTM block where we have 100 neurons in the hidden layers. And then finally, we have a dense layer with only one neuron and we will have a sigmoid activation in it to get our predictions. So, this is how the current model architecture is. So, I think adding a bedding layer will improve the model performance. Let us see. Okay, so we have not messed up with any dimensionality here. So, as you can see, the accuracy at the first epoch itself is much better than our previous model. So, after 5 epochs in our previous model, the accuracy hardly was around 55 57 percent. But after adding the embedding layer, the accuracy is around 75 76 percent. Okay, so let me come back once the training is over. Okay, we will continue our discussion further. So, we are almost towards the end of this training process. So, as you can see, the validation loss is increasing soon after the first epoch and accuracy also getting reduced. But on the training set, the model is doing good. It is basically in increasing the accuracy on training set and reducing the loss on training set, but it is doing quite opposite on the validation data that we have here. So, this behavior, right, so what you are seeing here. So, this increase in validation loss or decrease in validation accuracy and increase in training accuracy, decrease in training loss. So, this is a typical behavior of model overfitting. Okay, it is actually called as model overfitting and instead of learning on the training data, this model is memorizing the stuffs. Okay, so this model here, what we have here, model is memorizing the stuff while training. It is not learning anything, memorizing the data and trying to spit out the predictions. So, that is why it is doing good on training set and not doing good on validation set. So, if we just have another set of unseen data, I am sure it will not even reach 50 percent accuracy there. Okay. So, these few things you need to consider while you are training the deep learning models. So, one thing what we can try out here is uh, since it is overfitting, we can try to have regularization in place. Right. So, what sort of regularization? We can have dropout layers. And we can make use of batch normalization. Okay. So, these are the two concepts which will help in this basically batch normalization basically helps in speeding up the training process. And in one way, it will also help to reduce the overfitting. But this dropout layer is a typical regularization method adopted in case of neural networks. Okay. So, I will talk about these two things in my separate video. But for now, you can just now, what are the takeaways from this particular video right now? So, we tried to train a LSTM model on sentiment classification, but we failed to train it in such a way that it will generalize well. We, we did not achieve that part, right? So, instead what we did, the first model, it was not even learning anything on the training data, right? So, the accuracy was around 50%, 50-55%. But the second model, after adding the embedding layer, we seem to have improved on accuracy initially. But uh, as and when we progressed on the epochs, the validation loss kept on increasing and accuracy on training set data kept on increasing. So, these two are quite opposite, right? So, if validation on training loss is, if training loss is getting reduced, 
the validation loss is also expected to reduce but it is quite opposite here so training loss is getting reduced but validation loss is increasing so this is not the desired result right so in order to tackle this we have to adopt some additional modifications in our model by adding regularization such as dropout and we can have batch normalization layer added okay so that will be the topic for my another video but uh, since I have stored the model training data in a variable called as history, let me quickly plot you the accuracy and loss graphs. So, what we can say? So, this history will have a dictionary called as history. And if you just look at the keys of that, it will have loss, accuracy, val loss, val accuracy. So, these first two things will be for training data and this is for validation data. Okay. So, let's just plot the loss and accuracy curves. So, plt dot plot history dot history of loss so this is on training data as you can see training data the loss is getting reduced and if you check accuracy it will be increasing okay so accuracy is increasing this is the expected behavior while training but if you look at the validation loss and validation accuracy, you will see the divergence there. Okay, so if I say instead of loss, val loss, you see the loss is getting increased right from first epoch. So this is not the desired result. So that's why I'm saying the model is not learning even on the training data, it is just memorizing the stuff and overfitting on the training data. So, if you just check validation accuracy also, it will be downtrending. So, we actually wanted loss to be following this path and accuracy to be following this path on the validation set, but it is reversed. Okay. So, that's it for this video, guys. We have seen how we have to implement a LSTM model on any text classification task. Similarly, we can make use of LSTM to have a next word predictor or more generally we can call it as a language model okay so you can take this particular thing as a mini project and then show it in your academics and whatever you are seeing here you can try to improve on this this is not working at all you can try to adapt the changes that i have told you like adding dropout regularization or batch normalization employing okay so in that way you can improve the model training so that's it for this video if you are liking the content please give it a thumbs up please like this and also give your valuable feedback in the comment section and if you are not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see you in the next video happy learning bye bye